The journal is a core component of every double entry accounting system. Sometimes referred to as a daybook, the journal is where bookkeepers, accountants, and other financial professionals can manually add transactions to the accounting system. The journal is considered an advanced feature and should only really be used if you have experience in accounting. An explanation of what the journal is, why it's important, and how to use it are outside the scope of this video. What you will find in this video is a functional overview of how to add entries to your accounting system, assuming you understand their implications. There are three different kinds of transactions that can be added to the system in this view. A standard journal entry, a customer payment, and a vendor payment. We'll start by recording a cash purchase of property. With J selected on the left, we can edit the journal entry number, the date of the entry, and add an attachment if we need a reference document. By now, you might have noticed that there is only one line for this transaction. It will become clear in a minute why Billy starts with only one line. To add another line, move your mouse all the way over to the right side of the screen so that you're hovering over the sideways triangle. By clicking the plus sign, you can add another line to this transaction. Alternatively, you can use the hotkey, Control L, to add a new line. This is also where you'll find the option to delete a line or duplicate the transaction. Now that we have our two lines set up, we can start journaling. Now I'll enter the information I need to record this transaction. Since we're purchasing property and paying cash, I'm going to debit my PP&E account and credit my bank account. As I'm entering this information, you might have noticed a couple of things. First is that instead of using my mouse to enter these transactions, I can simply use my tab key on my keyboard to move between fields. Second is that as I enter this data, I can see a preview of the transaction in the lower right hand corner of my screen. This is really useful if you're adding a transaction with several lines and want to make sure that the entries balance. The third thing you might have noticed is that there are a couple of fields that I'm not using, most notably the tax rate field and the balancing account field. I'll explain what those are right now. The tax rate field isn't particularly useful in this example, so I'll get to that in a minute. The balancing account field is useful if I want to enter transactions quickly. I can click add transaction to add a new transaction or simply tab down to create a new one. I'll go through the same steps as before for the first line, but watch what happens when I get to the balancing account field. After I enter the debit to the PP&E account, I'm going to come over and instead of adding a new line, I'm going to select my bank account as the balancing account. You can see in the transaction preview pane below that the result of this transaction will be exactly the same as the one we just entered. Essentially, the balancing account will make an entry to the account you select in the amount that's been entered on the same line. This can be really helpful if you have a lot of entries to make very quickly. You can see, however, that the result in the general ledger will be exactly the same. The tax rate field is useful if you need to record sales tax for a sale on which there isn't an invoice. In this example, I'll record a sale to my other revenue account with a direct payment to my bank account. When I preview the transaction, I can see that it is coded to my sales tax account and the remaining balance will be coded to revenue. Next, I'll go over one of the other kinds of transaction you can enter, a customer payment. You'll notice that when I select this kind of entry, I'll have some different fields. With this kind of entry, I can select any of the outstanding invoices in Billy. Once I've selected my outstanding invoice and entered my bank account in the balancing account field, I'm going to preview the result of this transaction before it hits the general ledger. The net result of this transaction will be a credit to accounts receivable and a debit to my bank account. The functionality is very similar for entering vendor payments. Finally, once I'm ready to add these transactions to the general ledger, I'll select them on the left and click the green Approve Selected button. When you enter journal entries on this screen, they'll be saved here as draft entries. Only once you approve them do they get coded to the general ledger. Thanks for watching this video and happy journaling. Please let us know if you have any questions about the journal.